Thank you, Bron. We are running a little bit late, but we are going to continue. And lunch will be um, will be handling a little bit, uh, pushing lunch a little bit later. So uh, uh, we've got two more talks in this session. So Chris uh, um, Bakken is coming from Roche and talking. Um, I'm not sure what she's talking about. But I'm sure you'll you tell you guys. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Hi. Okay. So we're very close to lunch. So just hang in there. We're um, about two presentations away. So thank you for your patience. And hopefully this part of the presentation will be not about standards, but about essentially how we use standards in the industry. Um, so I'm Chris Bakken. I'm the global head and vice president of bioinformatics and software at Roche Sequencing Solutions. We're part of the, the Roche Group, which is a global entity. And I'm here to really share an industry perspective, a consumer perspective on the, on the state of data sharing, uh, the data standards as, as we see them today, as well as how we currently leverage and use the, the public domain data sets, uh, as well as really the future opportunities to enable genomic research and development of products in the industry, such as the one I'm in today. Um, so, okay, I forward the slides. Okay, uh, so again, um, Roche Group is a uh, large, large multinational company. Uh, in the U.S., we're mostly known as Genentech. It's the pharma arm of the Roche Group. Um, and really, the Roche Group is made up of two really... Um, two entities. One is the diagnostics entity. The second uh, is the, the pharmaceutical entity. Uh, and we're really the world's largest biotechnology firm, um, really developing diagnostic tests and, um, and pharmaceuticals. Uh, the statistics around global healthcare challenge is staggering. And what we see every day is that about 26 people are diagnosed with cancer every minute, and 900 people die from cancer worldwide every hour, every hour. And so for these reasons, our focus is to find medicines and diagnostics that help patients live longer, better lives, and evolve the practice of medicine. The impact that we have as a global leader in pharmaceuticals and in vitro diagnostics is highly inspiring for us as employees in this company. We have 27 million patients that we've treated with our pharmaceuticals, over 15 billion diagnostic tests performed on in our instruments and our assays. Uh, we have 29 Roche medicines that are on the H WHO list of essential medicines, and uh, we've been voted the most sustainable healthcare company um, from the Dow Jones uh, Sustainable Index. So, um, so our mission is really, um, you know, uh, to really make an impact, a global impact, when it comes to healthcare. For us, our, our focus has really um, gone from uh, pharmaceuticals and diagnostics testing that's generic in nature to really a personalized focus in terms of developing medicine and, and diagnostic testing. And, and part of that pursuit really begins with genetic testing. Uh, we're driven by the fundamental belief that personalized healthcare can transform patients' lives by delivering care that's tailored to the individual and helping to prevent, diagnose, and treat patients more effectively and cost effectively. And as part of that pursuit, uh, we've developed and, and formed an organization called Roche Sequencing. And our purpose here is to make NGS simple and accessible and routine for clinical use. Uh, simply said, uh, it's sample in, result out, and this is really what we're focused on at Roche Sequencing Solutions. Uh, just a quick overview of our products that we have in the portfolio. I mean, every day we actually come to work, and, and our motto is uh, doing now what patients need next. Uh, we have uh, launched a, a set of products recently called the Avenio Somatic Oncology Test Kit. Uh, it ha actually, it's, it consists of three test kits. The first kit includes 17 N uh, N uh, NCCN guideline genes um, uh, for lung cancer and colorectal cancer, all the way to the largest panel, which is 197 genes for, uh, uh, for surveillance monitoring and, and uh, tumor burden monitoring. Uh, we also have um, tests when it comes to NIPT called Harmony Test. Uh, we've uh, actually um, tested over a million uh, pregnant women in the world um, to date, and it's the most pr proven cell-free DNA test uh, in the world when it comes to NIPT. 
So for us, uh, really, I mean, you know, the reason why we're all here is, is really about molecular insights. And uh, the, 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 the true fact of the matter is that molecular information, molecular insights will essentially revolutionize how we look at diseases such as cancer. And for us, it's really this, um, um, this circle, this uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, interdependent circle uh, between essentially the, the R&D activities becoming smarter and more efficient driven by data insights uh, and also that driving in turn improvement in the way that we build medicines and diagnostic tests to ultimately provide better health, uh, better patient care. So let me then come back to why we're here. That was really just more of an introduction to Roche Group. Um, we're here because we're talking about really lots of rich sources of data that's available in the public domain and how, how that essentially enables development of molecular insights. For a company like Roche, where we're building products that are commercialized and provided to, to patients and uh, clinicians for, for routine use. Uh, we actually use a lot of different public domain databases today. Uh, it goes anywhere from essentially using uh, uh, public content for relating uh, uh, genomic variants to actionability, as well as essentially taking a look at something that's uh, much more complex, such as the somatic cancer variant information across a number of different databases as shown here. Uh, and obviously, as a lot of you guys are aware, there are lots of germline information, and, and we take a look at a variety of databases for germline cancer variant information as well. So as the, the, the sources of data are, are super rich, and it's very exciting to see um, again, uh, ongoing, um, um, uh, let's say, depositing of data into, into these sources uh, and for us to be able to use it for, for commercial uh, development. Um, yet, the use of public data sets remain highly challenging for organizations like us, uh, where we're looking to develop really robust um, medical utility claim uh, grade level clinical sequencing products. And um, for us, you know, what I did is I... I uh, polled a number of folks in my organization to get their perspective on what they see as the, the challenges uh, when it comes to public data sets and, and making best use of the public data sets. Um, it, and it really kind of, I, I would say, echoes a lot of the, the sentiments I'm sure you guys have in the audience, which is really the greatest benefits would be gained from higher confidence and better curated data sets. Um, one quote that I thought was really interesting is that, you know, a whole exome sequencing today is not the same as the data sets generated many years ago. And so we, what we really need to know is more information about the metadata uh, uh, um, around, around the data sets themselves uh, and being able to really um, get better, kind of deeper uh, understanding in terms of the quality metrics, as well as, again, kind of richer metadata view when it comes to genomic sequencing data sets. Um, Accuracy is obviously always a challenge, but just in general, uh, you know, we have a lot of different uh, naming uh, convention standards uh, when it comes to these databases, uh, and describing the variants and diseases are essentially not uniform. Uh, it becomes very difficult for us to then link the information uh, uh, sets across, across the databases and literature that we use every day for our product development purposes. So, uh, what's the opportunity? Um, what we would say is, um, you know, we, we see that the standards activities around these uh, databases and consortiums are, are just going to help improve really the quality of the data sets, and we're very encouraged by that. Uh, what we would say then is that um, there's opportunity to essentially get, gain access or deposit more information into, into the public domain when it comes to non-PHI clinical data sets, uh, such as treatment outcomes, uh, pre-existing conditions, as well as information about the various age groups. And, and all of these um, different types of data sets uh, would significantly benefit the, the community, as well as essentially organizations like us that are developing uh, commercial products. Uh, yet, the incentives for depositing data and, and, and contribution um, is, you know, is not really um, fully clear to many organizations. Um, and so 
the incentives and uh, motivation for organizations to to essentially become the uh, the community uh, player and and to be essentially contributors to these data sets it that that really needs to become much more obvious to organizations including an organization like mine a um, couple of things i would say uh, that we would like to note is that uh, consistent access control uh, and data privacy compliant data sharing policies like a mouthful there. So um, really secure um, data sharing policies that could essentially be um, managed in a very simplified way for even the, the, uh, the, um, the contributors uh, to the data sets um, need to really be obvious and, and, and uh, uh, fully transparent uh, to be able to address liability concerns when it comes to not just the contributors, but also the, the patients themselves um, um, who are really essentially the originators of, of where the, the, the content comes from. Um, the other main challenge is that the commercial reward or essentially the, the academic research recognition that comes from ownership of data will continue to remain barriers for sharing. And um, I certainly don't have the answer to how, how to solve that uh, dilemma today, but I would say that that would be the one thing that uh, we would love to see the, the, the data standards communities be able to address more, um, uh, uh, more concertedly in terms of essentially what would be the rewards and the benefits for, for uh, organizations um, uh, to essentially get, uh, get above this, um, this notion of getting recognized for the data sets that they own and, and the, uh, the, insight that, uh, the insights that they could derive from these data sets. So uh, that concludes my presentation. And again, we're here uh, at Roche Group doing what patients need next. Thank you.